Uh, Elijah uh, is the leader of a prophetic group on the margins of society. Uh, this group upholds the religion of the God of Israel against that of the Canaanite god Baal and the fertility goddess Asherah. Uh, while most of the other prophets have e either been slaughtered or bent their knees uh, to the foreign pagan gods. Now, Elijah challenges Jezebel's priest of Baal to a contest of faith uh, in order to prove if Baal is real. Uh, Elijah builds a prophet, uh, excuse me, he builds an altar to the Lord God, uh, and the, uh, the prophets of Baal build one for Baal. Uh, this is a spiritual contest on Mount Carmel. Uh, each prepares a feast for the flames, uh, but instead of lighting a fire, uh, they will ask Baal to send a fire from heaven to consume their offering, uh, which is a slaughtered bull. And Elijah will ask Yahweh to send a fire to consume his offering. Uh, the priests of Baal pray, and nothing happens. Uh, they cut themselves uh, and scream incantations. Uh, this is essentially ritual gashing of oneself. Uh, the priests of Baal limp around the altar. Uh, they perform a kind of dance bending one knee, uh, then bending the other. Uh, they keep at it hour after hour uh, while the prophet Elijah uh, watches and mocks them. Uh, nothing happens. No fire comes down from the sky. Now, Elijah uh, then takes his turn and gathers all the people around him uh, while King Ahab watches the proceedings. Uh, the Tishbite prophet uh, sets up the sacrificial bull on the altar uh, of the Lord, uh, while he has, uh, which he has rebuilt, and pours four jars of water over the altar uh, and the sacrificial bull. Uh, he actually pours water on it, not oil. Now, Elijah speaks to God. Uh, he tells God, I have done your bidding. Uh, now it is the Lord's turn to show his people that he is really God. Uh, fire pours out of the heavens and burns up everything, uh, beast, wood, and stone alike. Uh, King Ahab's uh, festival tunic becomes covered uh, with smears of ash. Uh, the people react quickly. Uh, they grovel on the ground and scream over and over, Yahweh is God, Yahweh is God. Uh, the fire of the Lord precedes the return of the rain. Uh, this is the end of the drought. Uh, final proof that the Lord, Yahweh, not Baal, rules the heavens and controls the destiny of humanity. Uh, this is a complete victory over the forces of Baal. Now, Elijah tells the people to grab the priests of Baal and drag them down to him uh, by the uh, brook at uh, Gishon. The prophet kills them all. He slits their throats. He kills 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah. Uh, King Ahab has never seen so much blood. Uh, he's uh, covered with it. Uh, the brook, the river, uh, becomes a pool of blood. Uh, a deluge of rain continues to fall uh, and uh, has brought on the end of the drought. Uh, the slaughter of the prophets of Baal is the ultimate irony. Uh, the priests, the prophets of Baal, uh, practice human sacrifice, and they have now become uh, sacrificial lambs to the Lord Yahweh. Uh, the priests of Baal uh, used to burn children to death on their altars, uh, and they also would bury the bodies of these children under the foundations of their temples and public buildings uh, and the gates of their cities in order to bring good luck to their projects. Human sacrifice is, of course, regarded as a, a big no-no, abominable by the Lord. Uh, the priests of Baal have been killed by the sword. 
uh, the struggle between Yahweh and Baal uh, is one of life and death. Now, the failure, the slaughter of the priests of Baal and the uh, prophets of Asherah, uh, the end of the drought, is of course the final proof that the Lord Yahweh, not Baal, rules the heavens and brings the rain. Yahweh is the true rider of the clouds. Now, Elijah tells King Ahab, points it out to him, uh, that the fault for the slaughter lies with the king and the queen Jezebel for not recognizing uh, that the Lord God is the supreme deity and allowing uh, Jezebel, the queen, to propagate her religion in Israel. Now Ahab returns to his queen in a panic. Uh, the king is covered in blood and ashes. Uh, Jezebel is in shock. And the queen has nothing uh, but contempt at this point for Ahab and can only think of her own ambitions. Uh, the queen demands that the prophet Elijah must be killed. Uh, his voice must be silenced. Uh, Yahweh is nothing without him. Uh, Ahab is not as strong as uh, Jezebel had hoped. Uh, Ahab does not want to kill the prophet of Yahweh. Uh, the king seeks compromise. Uh, Elijah uh, is far stronger willed than the king Ahab uh, in his determination to control the kingdom uh, and its people. Uh, Jezebel is in fact as strong-willed as the uh, Tishbite prophet. Uh, she is equally determined to bring Israel into what she considers civilization, cosmopolitan civilization, uh, and under her control uh, by the way of worship of Baal and Asherah. The queen will not let Yahweh win. Uh, she has the icy nerves of a snake charmer. Uh, Ahab must somehow try to keep both Elijah and Jezebel satisfied uh, without alienating either one. A balancing act. Uh, the king is in fact in the middle of two strong-willed uh, and irritable spiritual cobras. Uh, Jezebel in a way, admires Ahab's inventiveness in trying to maintain the balance or stalemate. Uh, but she must be Israel's ruler in fact, or there will be no kingdom left to rule. Uh, Yahweh will have it all. Uh, the queen must be cautious. Uh, she cannot have a dangerous lapse of judgment. So Jezebel sends the prophet a very blunt threat and gives him 24 hours to flee the land or be killed uh, as he has killed her priests and prophets. Now Elijah takes flight to Mount Horeb, also known as Mount Sinai, in order to escape Jezebel's anger. Uh, he is in fact at this point the lone faithful Yahwist <laughs> uh, and he has been successful up to a point, but he feels a sense of failure and falls into a desolate depression. Uh, now, Elijah on, uh, on Mount Horeb, Horeb, excuse me, Sinai, has a revelation. Uh, he hears the voice of God and gets a divine recommission. Uh, the voice of God tells him to go to Damascus. Uh, now, the prophets are, of course, wonder workers uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, they are a combination of divine displeasure and human disillusionment. Good government in the Old Testament is related to the practice of loyalty to God. Uh, this is the central issue in government. Now, prophets act as a type of check or judge up upon the royal prerogative. Uh, Jezebel and Ahab search for Elijah everywhere. The prophet cannot be found. Now, the king and queen go to Je 